Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? How you doing? You know who this is, the chosen one, Gabriel Skywalker from the DFS Club and Schroeder Skywalker here coming to you from the DFS Club, coming to you with the NFL main slate video. What's happening, guys? How'd you like my Bryce Harper call, huh? Yeah, you nailed that one right out of the park. We're we're uh, doing pretty good in baseball right now. Um, NHL just started. UFC's going right now. Uh, Cub Swanson's in the, in the octagon as we speak. It's a busy day here in the DFS club, guys. If you are new, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below because if we get over 100 comments and 100 likes, I'm going to give away a free one-month DFS club membership, guys. And then in your comment, make sure you put not a member. You can comment anything, but just make sure you add not a member to it. And that, got you, that gets you in that drawing. So we missed last night's video, so... I'm sure this one will make it, guys. NFL videos are always popular, so make sure you do that if you're not a DFS club member, guys. And without further ado, let's start the fucking show. Schroeder. Schroeder. Schroeder's throwing jabs, man. He's watching these fights right now. Um, and if you guys want to throw us a couple dollars in the tip jar, there's a heart down below. It says thanks next to it. You got a little heart, sort of doing a little heart thing. Um, you want those couple bucks in the tip jar? Really appreciate it. It goes towards Schroeder's child support fund. He got 85 babies, mamas, 150 kittens worldwide. I think it's worldwide at this point. Um, and it goes towards his salmon treat fund. It keeps his salmon treats topped off. You know what I'm saying? So. He getting a little chunky, but you know what? It's all right. He deserves it. He's the star of the show. So, yeah, guys, really appreciate it. Let's shout out yesterday's super thanks. Let's bring the screen up like this, Schroeder. So this is all for you, buddy. All right. Big Don sent us a $10 super thanks, bud. Just, just showing the love and the hard work and research you do that helps us in the club. You're awesome, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Big Don. You're the real one. You're the chosen one, bro. You're the one helping everybody out, man. So Big Don's a shark I brought into the club to help us out with that, with MLB. So, and we're kicking ass today. So shout out to Big Don. Thank you so much for the $10 super thanks. I am very excited. Very excited. Thank you so much, brother. Then we got Big Dave Barton. Thank you so much, Dave, for the $2 don't know. Really appreciate it, Big Dave. You already know. You already know, brother. Dave had a big, uh, he came in second in an MLB contest yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I'll have to look at the, we'll bring up the top 25 real quick. But uh, Dave was a big winner. Um, so congratulations, big Dave. And thank you so much. May the DFS gods bring you lots of takedowns, my friend. We got a new one, Mr. Glenn Davis. I don't recognize this name, so I don't know if you're a new viewer or you've just been quiet, but thank you so much for the $5 super thanks. He says, thanks for the research you share. Love your cat. You hear that, Schroeder? The real star of the show right here. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Davis. I really appreciate it. Going right towards Schroeder's child support. It keeps the child support police away from the door, and it keeps the salmon treats topped off. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate the $5 super thanks. And it's an MLB video. Like, this doesn't get a lot of traffic. So, thank you guys, man. You guys are the real ones. We got Ron Barlow rocking the RPS logo. Um, I fuck with them. They're cool guys over there. Um, thank you so much for the $5 super thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Jota really appreciates it. Um, yeah, man. Hopefully, you're doing as good as we are today. And uh, God bless you. God bless your family. Thank you so much, Mr. Ron Barlow, for the $5 super thanks. And we we got Catcher AD. Because we already know Catcher's a DFS club member, and, and he's always donating, like Jan. Jan donated, and the, um, um, oh, I got a, I got a um, Cash App donation I got a shout out to. But Jan's always donating, always, every single day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Catcher, who's also donating every single day. $2 super thanks. Thank you, brother. You already know. God bless you, brother. And then I got a cash app from Ron Barlow. Sent me a $4.99. Don't know. Thank you so much, Mr. Barlow. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, cash apps are great because YouTube don't take 50% of it. So 
Schroeder's even more happy about that, right? Schroeder don't want to pay no taxes. He don't want to do none of that. He sure as hell don't want to pay the YouTube tax. But uh, thank you so much to all the real ones who donated. And you know what? It's not necessary. I know not everybody can do it. Um, but it is. It's nice. But if you can't afford it, don't you dare be sour. It's all good. Just leave any comment. It helps out the channel a lot. It gets more, more eyes on Schroeder and uh, more eyes on me. And we're able to bring up... Uh, all this content, man. I did a UFC video, NH, NFL, MLB. I do them all, guys. Uh oh, Cub Swanson's in trouble. Did they stop it? Or was that the end of the round? Oh, it was the end of the round. Cub Swanson almost got finished there. Um, so let's bring up the top twenty-five. Let's show how we're doing so far today, Schroeder. We gotta we gotta brag about the club a little bit, right? I don't do this every video, but ZZ, sorry, Z, Zazubi one. I think, I believe that's Jan, actually. It is Jan. NHL yesterday was absolute fire, guys. I've only missed one day this year so far. Um, one day. We we're cashing every other day. So what? Three and four? Three for four this year. Came in fifth. Won $70. Way to go, Jan. TGG for life. We got some NBA. And you guys think we're fucking around here with this NBA preseason, man. Family came in second, third, first last night in last night's contest. Won 162 there. DTC, 126 there. Um, Dazillion came in first, took it all down with a $500 winner. This is NBA preseason, guys. Just imagine what we're going to do during the regular season. Nine on the field. Came in sixth here. One, very nice, dude. Um... Sorry, I'm like watching the fight and trying to do two things at once. Uh, Blackhawk came in first and second NBA preseason. That's what's up. And then Dave MLB came in second with a $300 winner. That's what's up, Dave. Congratulations, you guys. And we still got to post what we're going to win today. So if you guys want to join up, you guys want 14 bucks a month. That's it. $14 will make you holla. Because nobody offers this shit. Nobody gives you lineups, ownership, projections, top stacks, um, core plays, all that stuff for $14 a month, guys. Nobody does this. Go to DFSclub.com. Go check out the website. You got DFS space, my brother from another mother, myself, Skywalker DFS. And check out the slideshow. Look at these big triple-digit winners, double-digit winners. Like, this is insane. For 14 bucks a month, you guys will win that back in one day. So click join now. So you click on my logo, Skywalker DFS. So Schroeder and I here get credit. And then, like I said, we cover prize picks too, sports wagering, all of the above, man. We're, we're degenerates in here and we're proud of it. Um, bronze, silver, gold plans, three day passes. Every plan is the same. The only difference is the more you pay up, the more you save. Listen to me when I say this, guys. Stop losing. Don't you dare be sour. Stop looking at your phone and checking your lineups and see that you're not in the green. And continuously every day with the reaction of, son of a bitch. Start winning, guys. Don't you dare be sour. Come join the DFS club and feel the power. That's right. <laughs> Are you feeling the power right now after that Bryce Harper call? I bet you are. I think that I think we got all the homework out the way, Schroeds. So are we ready to get into this slate? I think we are. Man, Cub Swass is getting the brakes beat off of him, man. Um, but you guys already know. If you got them, open them, crack them up. Your your alcoholic beverage of choice, because we're gonna slay this fucker. Cheers. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up draft dashboard, guys. We're going to go position by position. And, man, we got some value on this slate, some good value, especially at running back. But key injuries, let's make sure that uh, we're all, uh, there we go. So key injuries, uh, Marvin Jones Jr. will be out. No, nope. Aguilar's out. Jonathan Taylor got confirmed out today. That sucks for my season-long fantasy. Keenan Allen's doubtful. Um, let's see. 
CD Lamb is questionable, so keep your eyes out for that. That's new to me. Tyler Lockett carried a late questionable tag, but he's 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 good to go. Thank goodness, because I have him my season long. Um, so yeah, roll him out there. Still don't know if Dak's gonna play or not. I'd probably say probably one more week. Michael Thomas is out. Landry is out again for New Orleans. So big big news there. Godwin's fully fully healthy. Uh, the Muth is out. Pat, Pat Firemuth. Bateman's out. James Connor's out. James Connor's out. So we got so much value, especially at running back, guys. But let's start it off like we always do. Let's go to quarterbacks. So we got the obvious choice here of Josh Allen at 8.2K going up against Kansas City. This game is in the afternoon. It should be fireworks. On paper, it should be fireworks. Josh Allen's 8.2K with all this value on this slate. I just highly recommend you get him. Obviously, my favorite play um, right now at 21%, so very chalky. And Cub Swanson's done. Jonathan Martinez just TKO'd him. Holy crap. Damn, I think he kicked him in the body again. Um, but yeah, Josh Allen, 8.2K, 21%. So definitely if you're doing double up, single entries, cash lines, you just throw him in there. Um, He's got all of his receivers back, too. So look out, man. Look out, Kansas City. Then you got Lamar Jackson. He's in play every week. He's facing the Giants. They're 11th in the league against quarterbacks. So if you want to pivot from that Josh Allen shock, you can go Lamar Jackson. But good luck, man. Josh Allen, by all means, should be the top scorer of, of, as far as quarterbacks on the slate. Now, Kyler Murray's in a great spot, too, against Seattle. Seattle has zero defense whatsoever. You should see a, a ceiling game here from Kyler Murray. Key word is should because of the matchup. Seattle gives in the last two weeks, they've given up, I believe it's over 100 points. 100 in the last two weeks. So Arizona looks like a good stat. Kyler Murray at 7 3. He's getting some ownership at 9%. Um, Tom Brady, too, 6.3K. Going up against this abysmal Pittsburgh defense. And I never thought I'd ever say that in my lifetime. Because they've always had a good defense, and I'm 45 years old. First time I've seen him with a bad defense. So you got Tom Brady out there who's found his groove back. He got his, his wife off his back, nagging him and nagging him and nagging him. Thank God my wife don't do that. I've had lots of girlfriends do that, and that's why they're ex-girlfriends. I don't put up with that shit. But Tom Brady, shout out to us alpha males, man. Um, 6.3K against Pittsburgh. I'm looking for the momentum to keep going. Pittsburgh is 26 in the league against quarterback, so they don't stop them. Kirk Cousins, I know, yuck, right? But it is against Miami. They're 30th in the league against quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins, 6K, get you 20 or more. Fine, you'll take it. And then Geno Smith, here we are. October, I'm, and I'm talking about Geno Smith, 2022. That sums up how this year has been, right? Just in life, general. I'm not talking about NFL. But Geno Smith at 5'7", going up against this soft Arizona defense, ranked 25th in the league against quarterbacks. You want to talk about consistency, especially for his price tag. 24, 35, 23, 7, and 17 in his last five. Love it, love it, love it. Get him in there against Arizona. Jimmy G's in play at 5.5K. Against Atlanta, um... I probably try and rather get to Geno Smith, but Jimmy's only getting two percent, as to where Geno's getting thirteen percent. So lower ownership definitely on Jimmy, um, and obviously Geno does have the higher ceiling. Now for some like bottom of the barrel down here, we got Daniel Jones who has a good matchup against Baltimore. He's five point two k. That's really cheap. Baltimore's 29th in the league against quarterbacks. So they're almost dead last. So like third from dead last against quarterbacks. So 5.2. Daniel Jones, can get, I think he gets a 20 here or more. But he can continue to do that. The man rushes the ball. No one really talks about this. Daniel Jones rushes like 10 times a, a game. Ten, uh, what? 10, 6, 9, 69. That's what she said. Um, and his last three. So. Love Daniel Jones at 5-2. It's him and Saquon Barkley getting all the carries. Patrick Mahomes is going to have a tough matchup at 8K. This is a risky play here. 
I know it's Patrick Mahomes, but it's a Buffalo defense, ranked second in the league. Um, I got to check and see if their secondary is still banged up. That's big news if it is. Um, but they're still banged up. I say you take a shot here. He's only at 6%. It's rare you get Patrick Mahomes at 6% ownership. So, But I'm going Josh Allen. But if you want to be different, this is the ultimate GPP play right here. It would be Patrick Mahomes because he's only 6%. So if it's Patrick Mahomes coming out on the top, like the cream of the crop, Randy Macho Man, he'd carry that little cream cup, the little cream of the crop. This is NFL. Anything can happen, guys. So GPPs, I'd run our, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Now, I only play three lineups. I might put him in one, one out of the three. So again, Josh Allen, the obvious play this week, especially in cash games, double ups. I mean, you can put him in GPPs too. It just get different elsewhere. So don't think you just have to play Josh Allen in cash games. You can get different tons of other positions. And that's what she said. But besides that, let's go to running backs, guys. Nick Chubb has a tough matchup this week against New England, but it's Nick fucking Chubb. I'd say probably the best pure rusher in the league right now. 28, 24, 20, 32, 18. Dude's unstoppable. He's, he gets a lion's share of the carries, even with Kareem Hunt back there, too, man. So Nick Chubb at 8-2 is definitely a play, and right now only at 5%. It's probably because there's a lot of value at running back. Everyone's paying up for Josh Allen, so no no, but no love for uh, Nick Chubb. Saquon Barkley, 7.7K. Um, good matchup against Baltimore. Not a great matchup, but a good matchup. Baltimore is ranked 10th against running backs. If you can afford the extra 500 bucks, I'd probably just go Nick Chubb. Especially, look at the ownership difference. Barkley's at 17 right now, and Nick Chubb's at 5. So, I'd probably pay the little extra to get the Chubb. Dalvin Cook, same thing. I'd probably try and get the Chubb, but Dalvin Cook's going up against Miami this week. They're ranked 21st against running backs. 26, 11, 15. Um, Dalvin Cook had a ceiling game last game, which he should have with the matchup. So, if the matchups are there... He'll get 20 rushes a game. I just wish he got more targets. He's only gotten two targets in the last two weeks. So Leonard Fournette, 7.4K against Pittsburgh. He's a target machine, man. He's next to Mike Evans. He's Brady's favorite receiver. I would assume these targets would go down, but they're not with Godwin back. They're still there. They actually went up 11 targets last week, seven and six before that, 36, 18, and 12. So Leonard Fournette. Against Pittsburgh, ranked 20th in the league against running backs. Looks pretty dope. You can take a shot with Alvin Kamara. I'm not the biggest fan of this play. Um, Cincinnati's pretty stout against running backs. They're fourth in the league. So Kamara at 6-7. It could be the Taysom Hill show again where he runs, you know, he gets four touchdowns and Kamara's just totally taken off the script. And he's, he's kind of chalky at 11% right now. So, yeah, I can fade that easily. Jeff Wilson looks great against Atlanta. 6.2K, 23, 13, 13 in his last three. Um, he's getting anywhere from 17 to 18 carries in his last two. So love that. You got Ramondre Stevenson, 6K. Normally he's the third down back. He's a pass catching back, but Harris is out. So should be out for a couple of weeks. This man had 25 carries last week. My goodness. And Cleveland has no no defense, and they're ranked 30th in the league against running backs. So, Ramon J. Stevenson at 6K at 33%. Imagine that. 33%, so everybody's paying down at running back, it looks like. So, he's definitely in play against this Cleveland defense. 23 DraftKings points and 25 rushes. Devin Singletary, 5.9K looks great. You never know what you're going to get out of him, right? I think when the games are close, Devin Singletary's in play. Now, if the Bills are going to blow teams out, that's when Singletary's just off the script. I think Singletary gets a lot of touches this week, a lot of pass catches. He had 11 targets three weeks ago in a close game. So when the games are close, that's what you got to look at. He's a target machine. So he got 24 DraftKings points that week too. So I like Devin Singletary at 5'9". Brees Hall for the Jets. Go Jets. 5.8K. 31 DraftKings points. 16, 15 in his last three. 
dude's a dude's a real deal man he's going up against green bay who all they do is run the ball they're 17th in the league against running back so Brees Hall looks outstanding but how can you not play Eno Benjamin this week he's only 4.6k James Connors out Eno Benjamin is in 4.6k allows you to get to the Josh Allen's out there allows you to get to those Buffalo Bill stacks so 35% ownership right now. He should be the highest owned running back on the slate, especially for 4 6. He's $1,700 more on FanDuel, so even cheap over there. Yeah, get yourself some Eno Benjamin. I got him on the waiver wire for my season long on both leagues, so I'm happy as a clam, a bearded clam at that. I'm, I'm channeling my inner Schroeder. Sorry, that was inappropriate. All right. The inner clam. Yeah. Schroeder, stop with the bearded clam stuff. Uh, you guys, by the way, my, my, my shows are not rated PG. Okay. They're just not Christian McCaffrey, 8.3 K 7% new coach in town, but it's the Rams. They're second in the league against rushers, but Christian McCaffrey is another beast, another level. He's basically a wide receiver, a running back. He's two and one 23, 26 in his last two, 17 before that 20 before that pretty safe play for eight, three. And you won't get all that ownership either. It's a tough matchup against the Rams. They're second, but it's Christian McCaffrey. You got to look at it that way, guys. And then we got the news today. No Jonathan Taylor. So Deion Jackson should get the start for Indy. He's only 5.2K. Why not? Why not pay down at running back this week, guys? Deion Jackson, 5.2, dirt cheap. Pair him up with Eno Benjamin. And then look, we'll build a lineup at the end of the show just to give you somewhat of an idea if we were to do something like that what what we can do because you guys already know tight ends are cheap anyway especially tight ends in this neighborhood all right so let's go to wide receiver so cooper cup should be good to go uh limited in practice but 9.7k against carolina it's cooper cup but you got justin jefferson against miami guys like it's hard to get away from this play here it's gonna be tough because I love the play, but you got Diggs right under him at 8-4, and Diggs has got 21% ownership. Justin Jefferson might be more trustworthy because it's it's his, right? 13 targets in his last two games. Now, last week, it was the Gabe Davis show. Justin Jefferson, sorry, Stefan Diggs, still got 27 fantasy points on 11 targets, but Gabe Davis started the show with that 90-something touchdown. So both in play. Jefferson's 8-9. Diggs is 8-4. Uh, Debo Samuel's fine at 7-6. It's against Atlanta. So Debo should have one of his 20-point fantasy games. Great ceiling there. And you got Marquise Hollywood Brown, 7.2K. So remember, whichever quarterback you're going to play, at least correlate, I'd say one or two. I'd say two pass catchers with him. So against Seattle, yeah. Marquise Brown looks like a great play this week at 7.2K. Right now at 10% ownership. When was the last time he's gotten under 20 fantasy points? Four weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Mike Evans has the nut matchup this week on paper. Pittsburgh's dead last in the league against wide receivers. So if you want to fade a, a Bills stack, you can obviously go a Tampa stack, who's probably going to be the second highest owned, I would assume, this week. Um, but yeah, Mike Evans at 7K. Him or Godwin's fine. Um, let's see. Metcalf, 6.8K. I love both of these receivers this week against Arizona. Um, I'd rather go lock it, but Metcalf looks okay too at 6'8. And then again, Chris Godwin at 6'1 looks great. Six targets, 10 targets in his last two. He's fully healthy. He's good to go. With that Tom Brady stack. Again, Pittsburgh's 32nd in the league against wide receivers, guys. My goodness. Then we got, I got a Thielen, Adam Thielen, 5.9K some for some salary relief. He's, you know, just a safe play. Seven to, to 10 targets a game on average. Seven, 15, 18 DraftKings points. Looks phenomenal, especially for only 5.9. It's also Amari Cooper. He's hit or miss. Um, so it's a risky play at 5.9K. So pick your poison. It would definitely be a one-off. I mean, his his ceiling right now is a 26, 28. His floor is a two. So just be careful there. 
Again, I'd rather play Tyler Lockett at 5'6". Why is he so much cheaper than DK Metcalf? Tyler Lockett's Geno Smith's favorite fucking target. I don't know. I'll just take the savings and run. So give me Tyler Lockett at 5'6 this week over DK Metcalf. Excuse me. And with all the New Orleans wide receivers out, Alave, last time I checked, he uh, cleared concussion protocol. He's a full participation in practice. They wouldn't let him practice in full if he wasn't. He's only 5'5". Against Cincinnati, they're pretty stout against wide receivers. They're sixth in the league, but who else are they going to throw to? Taysom Hill? Nah. Chris Olave looks outstanding at only 5.5K this week. He's always low owned too. I don't get it. 15, 17, 27, 12. Like, come on, guys. Too cheap. Jacoby Myers, if he plays, limited in practice, he's only 5'3". He's the number one target in New England. Played last week, got eight targets, 27 DraftKings points, and again, it's against Cleveland. So, yeah. Isaiah McKenzie, if you want to stack Buffalo and you're not getting to Gabe Davis, or if you want to pair him up with Gabe Davis or Stephon Diggs, he's 5K. Sure, coming back from injury. Darius Slayton could be sneaky. He's only 3.8K this week. He got seven targets last week for 14 DraftKings points. If you're doing a Daniel Jones stack, I'd throw in Darius Slayton because of the matchup. Baltimore's 30th in the league against wide receivers. I would just, you know, do a two-man stack. Daniel Jones, Darius Slayton, 3-8. That's good value. That's a good punt play. Again, Gabe Davis is 6-5. Coming off, you know, Six targets, that's all he needed to get 35 DraftKings points. Alan Lazard, another safe play. You're going to play Aaron Rodgers. You can throw Alan Lazard in there for 6K. He'll get, I mean, just 14, 21, 15. Very consistent. Christian Kirk. So, no Marvin Jones Jr. It's a tough matchup, believe it or not. Indy's second in the league against wide receivers. There's one thing they're good at, and that's shutting down receivers. But he's 5.8K. No Marvin Jones Jr., um, very interesting play here. I expect this game to be a shit show. It's Jacksonville and Indy for fuck's sake. So play at your own risk, but he's definitely in play for only five, eight. Anytime Christian Kirk's under six, you got my attention. And then for Kansas city, like who's it going to be? We got Juju Smith Schuster, 5.2 K consistently eight targets his last three weeks, six, 10 and 14. Don't mind that. DJ Moore's 5.1K. The Rams are 28th in the league against wide receivers. DJ Moore could be very sneaky, sneaky this week. New coach. Be like, hey, new coach, tell that quarterback to throw me the ball. I'll catch it. Just throw it to me. We'll see what happens, man. It could be a sneaky DJ Moore week, man. Um, he should get a lion's share of the targets. Romeo Dobbs for Green Bay is too cheap at 48, man. Five to eight targets a week. He got a six, 15, 21 in his last three. He's starting to see his role solidified in the Green Bay offense. So I do like Romeo Dobbs at four, eight. George Pickens has a tough matchup, but this rookie's fucking outstanding. He's 4.6K, seven to eight targets a game, seven, 19, 14 in his last three. He has that highlight reel, one handed catch a couple weeks ago. Love George Pickens for only four, six. Guys, before you know it, even on this horrible team, he's got good chemistry with this rookie quarterback. He might be up to 6K here before you know it. It's against Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay's 13th in the league against wide receivers, so they're kind of the middle of the road. Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Now, this guy would be a stud if he can just catch the fucking ball. Put some fucking sticky shit on your gloves, dude. Do whatever you got to do because it goes right between his hands. Wide open, in the end zone, what have you. Right between his hands. Patrick Mahomes targets him, man. Seven, five, and eight targets in his last three. If he was to catch these passes, he'd be like 20 fantasy points a week. So if you want to take a shot with him, he's 4.5K. It's just hard with the Kansas City guys. Who's going to get the fucking ball, right? Not named Travis Kelsey. That's a tough matchup this week. Alec Pierce for Indy looks good at 4.3K. That's too cheap. Way too cheap. Matt Ryan loves this kid. Six and nine targets. Here we go again. 69, 12 and 16 fantasy points in his last two. 4.3K. You can put him in a utility spot, stash him. You got four, three left. You're like, 
Maybe I might throw Alex Pierce in there against Jacksonville. Zay Jones should be out there. He should be playing. He's only 4-2, and with no Marvin Jones Jr., interesting. I'll put it to you that way, interesting. Because when he's out there and healthy, he's, he's, he's a stud. 25, he had that 25, 5, and a 13. 4 is really cheap. We got the main event going right now. We got the ladies in the octagon. Let's go down for more value here. We got McCole Hartman at 4K. Looked pretty good last game. He was actually targeted more than once. Finally got five targets, 12 fantasy points. Against Buffalo, though, that's the only thing that scares me. Jamal Agnew could see a bump tomorrow. With no, He'll probably step in as the third wide receiver. He's only 3-2. You guys want an ultimate pump play? I got you. Jamal Agnew for Jacksonville. Again, no Marvin Jones Jr. should be the third option. Not bad for only 3.2K. He got 21 DraftKings points two games ago on six targets. And that's going to do it for wide receivers. Let's take a let's take a peek here at tight end, man. There might be another two tight end week. I don't know. Travis Kelsey, seven, eight, four touchdowns last week. Was it five or four? I think it was four or five. It had it was either four or five. He's up against it against Buffalo, though. They're fourth in the league against tight ends, but this is Travis fucking Kelsey. He's right now at nine percent, which is kind of surprisingly low. Seven point eight K. Looks good. Mark Andrews also looks good at 7K, but if I got 800 extra bucks, I'm going Kelsey this week. Zach Ertz has on paper the best matchup. Seattle's dog shit. They're 32nd in the league against tight ends. Zach Ertz is getting double-digit targets a game, double-digit fantasy points a game. Double-digit fantasy points in the last five games, guys, for Zach Ertz. Love Zach Ertz this week at 10% ownership, and he's only 4.9K. Higby's always in play at 4-6. Double, another one that gets double-digit fantasy points. Going up against Carolina, ranked 14th. David Njoku, okay. Now I can jump on board. After playing this fucking guy for the last two to three years and him not doing shit, finally, finally. And he's getting a lion's share of the targets there in Cleveland. 10, 7, 6 targets. So they're kind of trending downward, though. But the fantasy points are there. 25, 11, and 15. Joku at 4K looks really good in a matchup against Cleveland. They're 25th in the league against tight ends, so a good matchup. Irv Smith's always a good pump play. He's only 3-2. Now, not much upside here, which I'm kind of surprised because over the years, Minnesota's utilized their tight end position, but they're not doing it that, that much this year. Miami's 23rd in the league against tight ends, so Irv Smith should be wide open. He's only 3-2. And then Big Montana. Will Disley, 3.1K is a good punt play. Geno Smith loves this guy. It's about fucking time he gets some respect. Arizona's 31st in the league against tight ends. Will Disley's been getting in the end zone every week, but last week it seems like. So he's still out there, 63% of the snaps, getting three to four targets, but he's a red zone target for Geno. So you want to get really sneaky, you can go Big Montana. You got Noah Fant, too. 3K. About the same results. Will Disley's actually had better results than Noah Fant. I'd rather I'd rather take the shot on uh Will Disley is four percent. Noah Fant's five percent. Evan Ingram, they're down Marvin Jones Jr. at 3.5k. He should see an uptick in targets. He got 10 targets last week, 13 fantasy points, and Indy's ranked 29th in the league against tight ends. And then Cade Otten, if you really want to get cute, 2.9k. His targets have been there the last two weeks, man. Four and seven tar- targets, six and ten fantasy points. So for 2.9K, this could be the ultimate utility pump play right here. Kate Otten plays for Tampa Bay, 10 and six fantasy points in his last two, and he got seven targets last week, guys. And then defenses, I mean, you're pretty much on your own, man. I just, I punt at defense. That's just me personally. Um, maybe Atlanta. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna punt with Atlanta this week, guys. I don't, I'm not paying up. I refuse to pay up. I refuse. Maybe New Orleans against Cincinnati. But Cincinnati's stupidly gross right now. And let's go to the lineup optimizer. So just for just as an example here, let's put. 
Josh Allen in at quarterback, and let's go with the cheap running backs here. Just so we get some type of idea. So if you go... Where are they at? You know Benjamin at 4-6. What's the other cheap one we can go? We can go Deion Jackson for 5-2, which is probably the other one I'd probably go with. So if you really pay down a running back, you can go Brees Hall, 5-8, Singletary, Stevenson. I mean, all that ownership, though. So let's say we're going to pay completely down, right? Deion Jackson. I'm sure he'll get more love tomorrow. Now we got six grand to play with. So you can get to Stefan Diggs, pair up with Josh Allen. Allen Lazard, not a must. Um, if you want to go two, I would go Isaiah McKenzie because he's only 5K. And then another one. Can we get some George Jefferson? Yeah, we can get the George Jefferson. So wide receivers is where you can pay up, man. Diggs and George Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. I call him George Jefferson. And then tight end, I mean, you can pay down. And utility. You can go all the way down to Kate Otten if you want. Um, Irv Smith. But some people are going to pay up a tight end. I might not be that person. But Joe is really safe at 4K. But let's get a let's get Irv Smith. So we're twelve hundred dollars over. That leaves Zach Ertz, the odd man out. We gotta scroll way, way down here. Evan Ingram, three five. So two tight ends. Got the Saints defense. You got a Buffalo Bill stack. So if you pay for if you pay down at running back, you can definitely get that Bill stack plus Justin Jefferson. So just saying. Just saying. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Schroeder, where you been, man? You want to stretch? He said, hallelujah. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Again, dfsclub.com. Click join now. Click our logo. Pick your plan. And you're in just like that. It's that easy. 14 bucks a fucking month. Let's go. You guys want to leave us a couple dollars in the tip jar click on the super thanks down below um you get a special shout out in the next video and it goes towards a good cause kitty child support and salmon treats right you damn right all right shorter you let them know what else do we forget about don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button I, subscriptions are just at a standstill man I know it's that time of year. Once NBA gets here, I know they're going to shoot through the roof. Um, but I'm just, I'm trying to get to seven, 7,000 by the end of the month. So, and if you're not a member in the comments down below, comment anything you want, but put not a member. And that gets you in the drawing for the free one month DFS club membership guys. Let's freaking go. Let's go. Stop saying son of a bitch when you're looking at your phone here at your lineups. Join the club. Come win some money with us. We'd love to have you. Let's get this spread. Don't take shit from nobody. This is Schroeder. I'm Gabriel Skywalker. Schroeder, let us get the fuck out of here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck tomorrow. Take care.